What if you could stop your enemies dead in their tracks? Watch this. Boom! Just like that. They're completely locked in place. I don't know about you, I'm excited. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start out today in a 5.5 first person project. And right here, we're just going to go down to the content drawer so we can acquire our asset. We're going to start by going to the Fab Store. Inside the Fab Store, we're just going to type in Animations, Animation Starter Pack. And it's going to be this first one right here. And then all we want to do is just go ahead and click and add to project. Now, for the project, since we're using 5.5, the only thing we're going to do is use the highest one. So 5.2 should be fine. And then select Add to Project. Okay, do a Control-Shift-S. And we can close this. And we can also close the Fab tab. Okay, next we want to go to our content drawer again. We're going to go to our first person. We're going to go to the Blueprints folder. Let me uh, drag this up a bit. We're going to double click and we're going to work on the first person projectile. Okay, And we're going to add just a little bit of logic here. And what we're going to add is this collision box. We're going to select the collision box. We're going to scroll down. And instead of pawn ignore, we're going to put pawn overlap, OK? Then we're going to scroll back up. And right here under sphere uh, radius, we're going to select 18 for this and hit Enter. And the reason we're doing that, if we go to the viewport, it's just going to make the collision box bigger than the mesh, so that way it can have good contact on the character we're attacking, OK? Do a compile and a save. Now, we're going to go back to our event graph. And then right here, just below the logic, we're going to, like I said, we're going to grab this collision here. And we're going to select, let's see, scroll down here at the bottom to on component begin overlap. And right off of here, where it says other actor, we're going to cast to pawn, OK? Next. We're going to do an apply damage. And this is what's going to allow us to apply our freeze, uh, our, our freeze right here. So right here as pawn, we're going to put that as the damaged actor. We need to put some type of value here. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put two damage. And then for the causer, we're going to drag off of here, and we're just going to type in self. like that. And that's what it should look like. And just hit compile and save. Now we can drag this right here. And that way we can just go back and forth. Okay. All right. So for the next step, we're going to go back to our content drawer. We're going to go to the first person uh, player here. We're going to do a control D to duplicate. We're going to do a BP underscore AI and yeah, BP underscore, we, yeah, we just do BP AI. And what we can do is we can double click that. And then while we're here, we're, we're going to just go ahead and delete the logic out of all this. We're going to get rid of this first person mesh. We don't need this. We don't need the first person camera because it's just the AI. And we're just going to do a compile and save here. And we're going to select our mesh right here. And for the mesh, we're going to select the mesh asset, which is going to be the skeletal mesh. OK, so this is the Manny 4 skeletal mesh. OK, now for the animation, we're going to select, let's see, I believe it's called hero something. Yes, so we want to select this. This is the one that came with the starter pack, OK? And we can go to our viewport real quick, and we can do a compile and a save. 
Uh, for let's see, I believe for the rotation we're going to do a, a minus ninety, and for the location I think this we can just set this to zero up here, and then I think for this right here we're going to hit minus ninety again, and that should put us in the general facility of where we need to be, and we got our animations working. Okay. Now, let's see. Make sure we do another save. Okay, so from the mesh, we're going to click on the capsule, and we're going to go down to the bottom here, and we're going to change this preset to custom, and then right here for projectile, we're going to set that to overlap, so we can let the projectile overlap this so our character can take damage. So let's go ahead and compile and save. Now, let's head over to the event graph. Hey, quick interrupt. I just wanted to show you what the logic's gonna look like once we complete it. You're gonna see the character freeze, and then you're gonna see the character unfreeze after a while. If you are enjoying the content, subscribe. If you like the video, then like the video. All right, back to the video. Okay, so now that we're zoomed in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing the AI logic. So we're gonna right click here, and we're typing the word CUST and enter and I'll give us our custom event. And we're just gonna call this the chase. And then right off of the chase here, we're gonna hold down the B button, hit a left click, and that's gonna create our branch. When we drag off of this condition, we're gonna promote this to a variable, and we're gonna call it is frozen, question mark. And then right off the false here, we're going to right click and we're going to do an AI move to node right here on the false. We're going to drag off the pawn and we're going to type in self and enter and that's going to give us our self. Now for the target actor, we're going to drag off of here and we're going to get the player character. And that's how we're going to set up that part of the code. Uh, the next, we're going to move over here. We're going to hold down the D button and do a left click. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we don't need. Yeah, we do need the delay. But before we do that, we're going to drag off of here, off the success. So once we successfully uh, reach the player, we're going to do a jump. Okay, just to indicate that we've found the player. So we're going to jump. We're going to hook up the delay right here. And then what we want to do is we want to re-add the chase logic. So we're just going to type in chase again. And right here with this chase, it's just this right here. That's all that is. Because we created this. That's what made this happen. But in order to even start any of this, we're going to zoom in right here. We're going to right click. And we're going to do an uh, event begin play. And we need to start the chase logic. So we're just going to go ahead and do the chase right here. Okay, and that will be the first part of the logic. Now we need to work on our freeze logic, okay? And we're just going to go a little bit down here. Okay, so right here we're going to right click and we're going to put a node called event any damage. Okay, I probably shouldn't have put a space, so it's right here, event any damage. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the Alt key and do a left click, and we're going to drag and put that onto the uh, to the graph here. We're going to set that as true. And then we're going to get the movement component of the character. We're going to drag it off of here. We're going to type in stop movement immediately is what we want. Let's see, stop movement immediately. We're going to put that here. Drag this here. And then right here, we're going to need to do a, uh, we're going to need to set material. So we're going to need the mesh for that. And we're going to do a set material. And we can hook that up. Move over here. We're going to hold, we're going to do a, Control, while this is highlighted, Control D, and that's just going to duplicate what we have right here. And we can connect that up as well. Now, for this material, we're going to change this to 01 
I'm sorry, not zero one, just one. Okay. And then let's see, we're going to do a hold down the D button, do a left click. That's going to give us a delay. And for our character, we're going to have them be out for 10 seconds. So that's how long they'll be frozen for. And then we're going to need to make the other one. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so we can actually um, right. we can go in here. Right click, we're gonna do a cust and enter. And we're gonna call this the unfrozen event right here. Actually, I don't like the way I wrote that. Let's do, yeah, yeah, unfrozen, that should be fine. Okay, move this down. Okay, move this down just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this code here just to make it nice and easy for us. And we're gonna do a control D right here. And we're gonna move this over, over here. We're gonna hook this up. And then right here, we don't want stop movement because if we're unfrozen, we're going to actually delete this, okay? And we're gonna have to go to set movement mode. So we're gonna drag off of here and we're gonna do a set move mode, movement mode right here. And we can hook this up. And for this, we're gonna set it to walking, okay? Now we can uh, neaten this up. Yeah, you want to neaten up the code because uh, make it easy for troubleshooting. Now up here, after the 10 seconds, we want to activate this code to where it allows us to walk again. And we can also uncheck this for the false. And the other thing is, yeah, so let's go ahead and add frozen here, unfrozen or unfrozen. So after 10 seconds, our character will come back to life and activate this code down here. And we don't need the delay here either because, yeah, we're not delaying anything. And now we're going to need, oh, see, and this is something important. Whenever you duplicate something, you got to be careful because if you don't add this stuff correctly, so we could just double click here and make a reroute node just to keep it neat. You want to make sure that we target the, both these meshes because we're setting them both. And we want to select the mesh right here. And then over here in the materials, we're zero. We're going to hit this right here. And that's going to give us the highlight of that. And while that's highlighted, we're going to hit this arrow here. Okay. And then for number one element, which is element one here and element one here, we're going to do it as well. So it's highlighted. And then we're going to set that as well. Now, for this one here, because we're going to be frozen, we want our character's mesh to look different. So almost like it's an ice sculpture. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click down here. And I believe it's called glass. Yes. So we're going to use this glass statue. Okay. And then what we can do is we can hit the browse button here as well. And we got the glass right here. And we can highlight here. So that way the character's full mesh turns into that. We're going to do a compile and a save. Okay, and then that should be the logic for that. But now we need to go back to our first person here, okay? And remember, whenever you have a, a net, a, an AI that's going to be chasing a player or walking around, you're going to need a nev mesh bound, which is up here. So we click on this. We go to the volume right here. We go to nav mesh bound. We're just going to grab and drag that out here. And let's try, okay, we'll lock, we'll lock the scale and we'll try 15. Let me go back. So 15. And we can uncheck the scale here. And we can set this to like 2 or whatever. Okay. And then we're going to hit the P button. Let's see. I'm sorry. Let me go back. Type in nav mesh here. That was bound. We can raise this up and down. And then hit P. And that, that should, when you hit P, that's what will show you what you got. So everything's pretty much covered. Now, okay, so right here, if we want our character to move up top here, we're going to need to make the height a little bit better to make the green come up here. So we can try, let's try five. Five should work. We can do a save. And then now we also need to add our character. So 
Let's go back to the content folder. Let's go to the first person. Let's go to blueprints. And let's just go ahead and drag this character out here. We'll put him over here so it give us time to get to the gun. Okay. All right, let me just double check something here. Okay, so there's two things I was just noticing here. So real quick for the acceptance radiance, let's go ahead and switch this to, let's say, 50. And let's go ahead and set the delay to five seconds. Uh, the reason is so we can allow the jump to happen, and the 50 is so it's not running into the player. Uh, as far as this is frozen, you want to click on this variable and make sure this is set at false. Okay? And we're going to do a compile and a save. And uh, as a bonus tip, what I like to do whenever I'm doing AI is, this is something you're going to might want to remember, is you want to select the main character here, right? And then in here, you can just type placed, okay? And Unreal by default does it placed in world, but I like to set it to placed in world or spawned and do a compile and save. Now, this is cool because what it does is it allows you to, uh, it allows you to, basically place or spawn the character because if you don't do that if you try to spawn it like in another project like you know then it won't work so yeah the other thing i would like to do is i want to go to the actual viewport here and i, I want to check because this is an older character and his mesh is a little bit different i just want to make sure he's lined up so we're going to select perspective and left and what we can do is we can use the mouse scroll in a bit we're going to grab our character here and see in the mesh, we're gonna set it down here. So that way it's flush on, on the ground here because if not, the character's gonna be up in the air. We're gonna do a compile and a save. And then what we can do is we can uh, go back to our regular perspective and go back to our event graph. Okay, so last but not least, while we're on our unfrozen part here, let's just make sure we add the chase logic back because we want it to chase after they become frozen, unfrozen again, okay? So select that, do a compile, save, lift this up here, and let's just go ahead and uh, go to our, our, our game and hit play, and let's go ahead and check it out. So now, if he comes near us, he's just going to jump, he's going to wait five seconds, and now we got some distance, we hit him, now he's frozen. And he'll be frozen there for 10 seconds, we can get away from him, and if we look, we'll wait, and here he comes. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this unique tutorial on how to freeze your character. So go ahead and check out this video that I'm going to post here and, and the link up above.